Hi, I'm Louise Grant from Nashville, Tennessee, and I am with Angelique Mazel Robbins, who is an internationally known channel for the angelic realm Gashikta. She is an intuitive, energetic healer, a clairvoyant medium, and she has a private practice and speaks nationally to groups. I've been a personal student of Angel Gashikta for three years. It's transformed my life in so many ways. And I'm so happy to share with you Angel's personal journey in becoming a channel and what her life is like on a daily basis as the God essence, the divine intelligence of the universe connects with her, moves through her in a most profound way to help awaken and transform humanity. So, hi, Angel. Hi. Okay, questions for today. I was thinking about your personal journey over the last 20 years with Gashikta, and I know how it's impacted you personally but I wonder how it's been for your family or some of the other relationships besides your life partner, Keith, who is a student with Gashikta, who himself is an intuitive medical healer. But what about the rest of your relationships? How have they felt about you? Well, <clears throat> I don't know exactly because really there's only two of my family members that have really given me feedback, which is my father and my stepmother. And they are both Christians. My father has a PhD in religion, Christian religion in, in specific. And so for him to be supportive and complimentary and open-minded with it uh, has been extraordinary and uh, really has helped my confidence in ways I can't even describe because for the most part I felt really rejected and regarding the rest of my family uh, my birth mother, my brother, my other siblings, I'm not sure. You know, I, I, have, I don't have any feedback from them. I don't even know if they know what I'm doing. They don't ask. Do you think they're afraid of it because they don't understand what it means to have a direct connection with God or angelic realm? I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't. Uh, I don't have any idea what they think about it. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that since I started on this journey, in fact, <clears throat> my relationship with them has gotten just more distant and my relationship with my father and my stepmother has become closer. Mm. So, you know, I think that this type of thing just resonates with some and doesn't with mm -hmm. others, and that's no different for family members. Yeah, that makes sense. And you know, we, we are in Nashville, Tennessee, so this southern part of the country, this known as the Bible Belt, and the sometimes the fundamental Christian religions and theologies, I would imagine, um, would have some people be skeptical because they just don't understand how it's possible that angels would move through you because they see it only as, sure, it's fine for an angel to speak through the Bible to people who were written about in the Bible, but not in 2018. Um, but you've been able to process that and 
just continue on and know that you have clarity about your path as a messenger? Yeah, you know, it's, do any of us really, how much of this is our choice kind of thing, you know? And I, I do realize that there's many things that have been my choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was my choice to study with the woman who channeled Michael. It was my choice to really dive into this type of spirituality and to be open to it and to be willing. But there's a whole other component, which is also, I'm just kind of made for it. It just kind of happened this way. Mm -hmm. And the momentum was has always been strong in this kind of weird area. So I, I, I really think that all of us experience something like that. We don't always know why we're drawn to the things we're drawn to, but we are. Mm -hmm. And that's generally the way I look at the whole thing. And, I, you know, I think it's really interesting because while I've had some serious rejection and criticism from some Christians. Uh, like I said, my father is, he's very much a Christian, the most educated Christian I know, in fact, and he's not rejecting me or the teachings of Gashikta at all. In, fi in fact, he finds them to be um, very wise, mm -hmm. and he says he's very proud of me. So. I don't even think it's that, and I have some clients who are very Christian, but you know, a couple of my most dedicated clients are Christian, mm -hmm. but it doesn't bother them. And you know, they, they find the teachings of Geshikta to be similar to the teachings of Jesus. Absolutely, they are such great wisdom teachings. Yeah, so you know, I think that, ultimately I think those who are really aligned with Jesus' teachings, are going to like Gashikta's teachings. But those who aren't, I don't think they're going to. Mm. That's, that's generally my observation. Mm -hmm. And I feel very proud of the Christians that are open-minded enough to listen. Very good. Do you feel that you and Gashikta have been together in many, many lives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know like exactly how, how that whole thing goes, but it feels like a very long-term relationship. That they chose you, you chose them. Was there perhaps a yeah, like con a soul contract <clears throat> or an agreement? to be in this life experience? Must have been. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember any of that. Mm -hmm. They certainly adore you. They're, they're so protective and so loving of Angel when they move in through her and when they are teaching us in class and I'm one of the students and have been for three years such a blessing in my life but you know they just see you as sacred and such a blessing and they're so grateful they are. to you well they they say you know angel if it wasn't for you we would just be air right <laughs> <laughs> so you know they're giving me credit mm -hmm. because it's my mouth they're using and it's my body they're using and it's not easy on me. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to channel their energy. It's actually very difficult and challenging. It takes a lot of work for me to keep up with them. You know, and, and I don't. I don't keep up with them like I want to. Well, what, I, I what does that mean, keep it, up? It means I don't want it to be painful. For your physical body. Yeah. I want to have such a clear vessel and such a healthy vessel um, that their energy meshing with mine is feels very easy mm -hmm. 
not exhausting. And I know, because I can feel it, I know that the reason it's exhausting is because I'm, I'm not as clear. I'm not as happy as them. I'm, I, I have ruminating thoughts. I have stagnation. I have things that they don't have. And so when it comes into contact with my body, my body's reflecting all of that. Mm -hmm. And so that energy starts moving through all of those blockages and, and that slow moving, stagnating energy. And it hurts. Uh, I believe that's why I experience pain. So my goal is for that to not happen. My goal is to really be the best student and to become more and more clear and more and more powerful. Just me, just mm -hmm. being me. So that when this occurs, number one, it's easier on me, but number two, the power with them coming through is even greater. Very good. I know that they have spoken to a students and they've said that they only bring a small fraction of the entirety of their power through you because they've said we couldn't handle the force of it that you couldn't handle it physically but also as students in their presence we couldn't handle the force of it yeah. so is that how you perceive it as well oh yeah and when they, you know, there's, it's like when I'm channeling, depending on the subject matter, depending on what Gashikta is doing at that time with the group of people or the person, you know, the amount of energy that comes through, uh, what's the word? Vacillates. Yeah, or... it's, it's not, it's not always the exact same. Mm -hmm. And when those surges of energy come through, it's, it's, uh, hard to handle. For example, one time I was channeling with just one client and um, this client was a new client and the way I, s new clients I say are mucked up because once Gashikta has worked with someone for a year, they feel a lot different energetically and it's not as exhausting for me. But someone who has never been in that type of energy before and say that person's you know 50, 60 years old, they're really, they've got a lot of stagnating energy. There's a lot to work with in there, a lot of blockages. And so much energy was pouring through me in this session with this person that I got the spins like when you're drunk and I thought I was gonna pass out, I thought I was gonna throw up, it was horrible. And this has happened a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the kind of thing that occurs when the energy is really strong. And it's interesting because in those times, I'll be in here and I'm, I am experiencing the spins. And I'll say to Gashikta, you guys, you're gonna make me pass out. It's gonna make me pass out and throw up. I'm sure nothing that's coming out of my mouth is even coherent. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, it's coherent and you're gonna be fine. And sure enough, it's true. Mm -hmm. I, I listened to the recording back and somehow my mouth kept moving. It was completely coherent, but my experience of it was like being shit-faced drunk and <laughs> about to pass out, <gasps> have a blackout drunk, you know? That's scary. Yeah, what well, it is, it can be. But you're brave. Well, at that when that happens, I don't really have a choice because you know, that's, that's the point of channeling where it's like there, there's something that Yashikta is doing and I'm not in control of mm -hmm. that. But I got to say, I have never passed out. I've never had anything happen to me that was harmful to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like shit, but I keep getting healthier. So there's that. And that's why they're so appreciative because they know what you have to go through physically and emotionally yeah. to be able to hold them yeah. with all of their 
endless energetic power. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and they they have an agenda. You know, they say we want to train the seven thousand. We want to train seven thousand of you to be strong enough to handle the pain of one million people each, in order to transform this planet into something much different than we've ever seen. And you know, so I, I feel that they're very appreciative that there's an inroad. You know that and I am the inroad mm -hmm. and that you're an inroad anyone who who studies with them and you know because you're doing it too you're channeling their energy every time you give a healing treatment mm -hmm. and it hurts doesn't it mm hmm yeah yeah it does so when you say the 7,000 it is interesting to think that the angelic realm this God energy divine intelligence has a specific agenda for humanity and as they've explained it to you and to us as students they are seeking 7,000 people minimum from anywhere on this planet who are willing to invest fully to be fully committed to heal thyself emotionally, physically, spiritually, and then be charged with learning how to heal others. Yeah. And when they say 7,000 to absorb the pain of a million each, each, they're saying that covers the population of the of entire Earth. Earth. That's, right. <gasps> That's a lofty <laughs> agenda <laughs> for the angelic realm to yeah. have. <laughs> I think they're really sick of seeing us suffering. They're like, you know, you, you guys don't have to suffer like this. You, you can change this up, but it's gonna take at least 7,000 of you, you know, being badasses. It's gonna take 7,000 of you willing to go through some pretty extreme growth to, to tip these scales. We hope we found some of the 7,000 today. Oh, that would be cool. We all need each other to heal the world by healing ourselves first. I know. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Angelique Mazel Robbins and her beautiful gift of channeling the angelic realm, Gashikta. We hope you'll join us next time.